My name is Julie Fox and I'm the manager of Annex Communities, uh, based at Annex Health and Living Centre in Partick. Uh, we normally run a healthy living centre offering uh, wellbeing activities, health and wellbeing activities for people of all ages, um, but a large part of our client group are elderly. Um, therefore, when the COVID pandemic started in March this year, we decided to organise a community response. Uh, we closed our building, obviously, to the public uh, in line with government guidelines, and we got together as a staff team with our volunteers and decided to organise emergency food supplies to particularly the elderly and those vulnerable people living in the community. We also thought we would like to offer some telephone wellbeing support as a means of keeping in touch with people who were being advised to shield or to self-isolate as we felt it was important to keep in contact with people and just to check out how they were. Very quickly, we um, coordinated how that would work and we utilised initially just the fair share donation and the fair share is a supermarket surplus scheme which gives charities uh, surplus food supplies and they put it to good use cooking meals for people in the community or, or other good uses. Uh, we decided to use that donation which we normally got for a community cafe to deliver food supplies to those people shielding. We allocated a member of staff uh, to go through our registration list and telephone around 500 people that had already been registered with the Annex and from that 500 we identified an initial group of around 40 to 50 who identified themselves as needing support. These were people who were elderly, uh, over age of 70, with underlying health conditions um, and who were choosing to shield and didn't know how they were going to get support and how to get food um, if they were going to be self-isolating. Most of them didn't have family support for one reason or another and most didn't have internet access to order food online. So they were a very vulnerable uh, group. The next stage um, was to look at funding to develop the scheme and quickly we realised there was funding available from the Scottish Government through the Strength in the Communities Fund and we contacted one of uh, the partners involved in that, the Scottish Community Development Centre, and made an application to the fund. There was a quick decision and turnaround and we discovered we were successful. That fund then enabled us to supplement the fair share donation and purchase fruit and vegetables for the, the people that we were supporting and additional essential household items. Uh, food, but also items such as toiletries and cleaning products were needed as well. Um, so we organised that. On the Monday, we also organised the food and vegetable supplies from the local supermarket Morrisons, who had been a partner uh, previously making small donations. And we, they coordinated the, uh, one of their community champions to pull together the food and vegetable packs and prepare them for us to uplift on a Monday, which we did and did. These were then easily sorted and delivered to the people in their homes. And Morrison's were very kind and gave us a, a, a discount on that price as well. On the Tuesday, um, our normal procedure was to um, uplift a donation that Morrison's would give us, and that was uh, items like tinned or packet foodstuffs. It could be tea and coffee or UHT milk. Uh, and the Morrison's had a scheme in place to donate to food banks and they chose to support us as well. Um, and we're very appreciative of that. Uh, it was very kind of them to do that. As part of the scheme, we also recruited a team of volunteers locally. I think about 22 in total came forward and the volunteers uh, were involved in the, the huge task of unpacking and unloading the food supplies that we got donated and that we purchased. Um, this was a massive task every week. Uh, each uh, box and package had to be un uh, unloaded and then dis uh, distributed into the bags for handing out and delivering by the volunteers. So we had a team of unpacking and, and food preparation volunteers and a team of volunteers to deliver 
the food bags to the, the people's doors, front doors, all obviously following social distancing um, guidelines and following all health and safety precautions as well. Um, around one month into the scheme, we also were approached by the National Lottery who wanted to support um, in some way the work that we were doing as they were an existing funder of ours. So they uh, were very kind and we put a proposal to them to extend the food scheme, the food support scheme, and we secured some funding from them. That then enabled us to extend the service to those in the community who were self-isolating for other reasons. It could have been because of their um, underlying health conditions, but were younger or families, and that enabled us to extend the food supply scheme to them. But at the end of the, that period, around May, middle of June, we were supporting around 122 people a week. The majority of those were food supplies, but also a few who began to get supported with the government food supply scheme, who then only needed us for telephone support uh, and just a check-in. One of the community groups who are very active and do a fantastic job in the community are the Annex Communities in Partick. They, they are one of the groups uh, across the city who have stepped up to the plate when it's, uh, once the Covid-19 crisis emerged. Uh, they had contacts with people in the community who they identified as maybe uh, requiring of some great assistance, certainly in terms of food, uh, and uh, since the, the crisis has been ongoing uh, annex communities have done a fantastic job here in Partick in the wider area delivering sort of fantastic and nourishing and tasty parcels of food to kind of the vulnerable uh, in our community uh, and, and all I can do is uh, pay, pay credit to the volunteers in the annex and, and also those volunteers across the city who have stepped up to the mark during this crisis and are providing this fantastic, fantastic service to local communities in this area and across the city. In May, we also discovered that an application to the Martin Lewis Corona Charity Fund had been successful and we were awarded a, a £5,000 grant to supplement the food supplies. Uh, we realised that the people that were involved that were benefiting were missing out from fresh meat supplies and so we decided to use that fund to purchase a meat parcel from the local butcher every week and we did that on a Thursday. Um, around 50 to 60 people benefited each week from a fresh meat parcel uh, that included small items in a one person pack and to enable them to cook a healthy meal. Others who were vegetarian or who preferred not meat were supplemented with additional fruit and vegetable supplies. In the early days, uh, one of the partners that we quickly linked up with was the local housing association, Partick Housing Association, and we worked with their housing uh, staff to identify people who would benefit from food support. They would contact their tenants and call, telephone them and ask them how they were coping with the pandemic and anyone that they identified as needing additional support, particularly for food or for telephone call, they would refer on to our scheme and we would follow that up, matching each person with a, a volunteer. And throughout the scheme, the volunteer maintained contact with the same people and that enabled a relationship to be built up and a, a, an element of trust and we hope that some of that will continue beyond the scheme and that we'll be able to support some of those more vulnerable people uh, within our Healthy Living Centre Health and Wellbeing Programme, which would be a positive outcome of the whole, the whole experience.
Additionally, we also matched up with the local sheltered housing complexes. We had previously no contact with the sheltered housing providers, but also realised that they would be uh, potentially an area where we would, we would need support for their residents. And through that, we started to support two uh, separate housing, sheltered housing complexes uh, and supported a total of about 18 residents between those two com complexes. I really need to say a big thank you to all the volunteers that helped throughout our uh, community support scheme, 22 in all. They did a grand job. Um, when you think about Partick and the number of tenements in Partick, and in fact, quite a lot of the people lived on the third floor, so they were kept fit, carrying all of the bags up and down the stairs twice a week, um, keeping themselves fit. Uh, if you can imagine, bags of fruit and veg, tinned and potatoes every week, um, yeah, they kept themselves fit definitely during lockdown. Once we had totted it all up, we realised that, um, yeah, we supported 122 people throughout the 19 weeks to date, but when we added it all up, it worked out as 3,400 bags of shopping, um, which then supplied all of the weekly shopping needs of the 122 people. And if you count that as daily meals, three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and even meal, that amounts to almost 20,000 meals over the period that the volunteers delivered direct to the door of the people that were in need of help.